Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about a film that I uh, actually not talked about in quite some time. Also, I haven't watched it in quite some time. <clears throat> and interestingly, this film is sort of like last week. Though I, what I did not say at all last week was I actually already talked about that movie. I already talked about The Green Mile about almost five years ago or so. Same with this film. However, I thought... Why not I talk about it again? It's a good movie, and sometimes good movies are just worth uh, talking about again. And uh, that film is, of course, uh, The Shawshank Redemption. Now, I'm not going to do what I did last week and just give the general gist of the film, uh, nor uh, anything of that sort. Um, Though I might accidentally repeat myself a bit here, but uh, I guess in short, uh, the film is about Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, and uh, who is uh, sent to prison, Shawshank prison, where uh, you know his wife and her mistress were killed, or mistress, <laughs> her lover. Mistresses are usually for men but you know what i mean she was having an affair and she wanted a divorce he wasn't going to give her one she's at she goes to uh uh the man she's having an affair with and uh uh is shot to death and um he goes to prison for this because he had a gun, which was the same sort of caliber that was or the kind of gun that was used at the crime, which does not at all uh, look good at all for him. But uh, yeah, he just uh, he gets to go to prison <clears throat> and. Uh, First, he, bit, he keeps to himself for the most part, but then he's basically, you know, targeted by a group of guys who, you know, want to, you know, or want to do stuff to him and do, you know, in prison and all. Uh, yeah. Because this is going to be on YouTube, I, I, I probably can't really say the word uh but you can kind of uh guess uh what i'm meaning anyway uh morgan freeman plays red uh ls redding he uh is a guy who can basically give every get somebody anything within reason like like uh he for instance, he wants a rock hammer, which is going to cost him a little more because of uh, the item is uh, a bit riskier to get in. And uh, so <clears throat> he uh, gets him that and uh, yeah. But this film is uh, has a good cast. Bob Gutton is the uh, warden. Clancy Brown, who people in my generation will know as Mr. Krabs, growing up in the like, late 90s, early 2000s, and so on. So, um, get to see him in the flesh. Of course, it doesn't sound anything like Mr. Krabs. William Sadler is in this film. He, uh, plays Haywood, another prisoner. Uh, Clancy Brown plays the uh, uh, captain uh, of the uh, uh, security. Yeah, Bob Gutton's the uh, warden. James Whitmore plays Brooks, a guy who's been in there the longest in Shawshank and uh, is, as they call it, institutionalized. And, uh, yeah. Gil Bellows plays a guy named Tommy who comes in in the 50s at uh, this goes from the late 40s to the 60s, and you see 
he he gets some posters from Red, uh, and he does, and um, you know the posters are quite important. You know, it's first uh, Rita Hayworth, then Marilyn Monroe, and then uh, Raquel Welch as the for the, for, de for the different decades, and this is based off of a Stephen King novella. Uh, Rita Hayworth, my Shawshank Redemption. Um, again, one of the few uh, stories that uh, Stephen King made that is not at all horror related or a thriller or whatever. I mean, he's, you know, he's made a lot of books and stories, written a lot of stories over the years. Most are associated or associate with Stephen King regarding with horror, like Carrie, Shining, It, so on and so forth. But this film is truly excellent, and just as I said uh, last week, uh, the director of The Green Mile wrote and directed this film, Frank Darabont. He was nominated for an adapted screenplay, which I think he should have won, though that went to Forrest Gump. Not nominated for a uh, director which is a shame um <clears throat> morgan freeman i do think should have won the academy award this year he uh was phenomenal you know for best actor tim robbins was not nominated for best actor um though he could have been but you know tom hanks won for uh forrest gump and forrest gump is not a bad film at all um but I just love this film, as I mentioned last week. I saw this when I was five, because in 99, around the time the Green Mile came out, they were having, like, a, I think on HBO or something like that, or some channel like that, they had, like, a marathon of a whole bunch of Stephen King film adaptations, like The Shining and Stand By Me. I think I saw part of Stand By Me also around this time, but... I think this was after the Shawshank Redemption, because I remember very clearly watching the Shawshank Redemption from beginning to end, and I think part of the uh, uh, Stand By Me, I don't think it was in order, <clears throat> you know, chronological order in terms of release date, or release date order, I guess I should say. But, uh, yeah. yeah from, but this is, uh, but the novella was in the collection of uh, that had the the body which became stand by me so there you go and also stand by me was made by rob reiner his company castle rock helped produce this film he wanted to direct this film but frank darabont was like no i want to direct it um he already uh reiner already directed stand by me and misery so that's why he wanted to do another stephen king uh uh, adaptation. However, uh, Darabont had done some short films and he wanted to really make his own <laughs> film. And he thought this would be the best film to do, or the best you know project to do. And um, this is a great film. Um, I love watching this. I've always enjoyed this film since I first saw it. Um, the acting is phenomenal, the music, the cinematography by Richard Dink Deakins. <clears throat> uh, you know, everything about this is, a, is phenomenal. Um, definitely a, a film that is one of the best that came out in 1994. Um, this was nominated for seven Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Actor, Adapted Screenplay, and others. Um, they don't list any on the back, unfortunately. And um, this film won no Academy Awards. Um, but despite that, and despite the fact that, you know, Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump were the big films, and of course, Forrest Gump won... <coughs> Uh, six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Director, and Actor. Um, and I'm, yeah, Adapted Screenplay also. Um, 
um, Pulp Fiction won an uh, original screenplay. So Quentin Tarantino for his second film won an Academy Award. But uh, when it came to home video, this film had more sales for the rentals than uh, Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump. Uh, I believe even, uh, actually even combined, obviously. <laughs> you know, it's like people really love this film. And this film did not do well at the box office. Apparently people couldn't at all uh, recall the name. The Shawshank Redemption. People kept calling it like Shinkshank or uh, Shankshaw or uh, Shimshank Reduction or some like a combination of words that does it isn't at all the title of the film. Um, and, and something that was interesting is they had to actually change the drop Rita Hayworth from this because a whole bunch of women were coming in to audition to play Rita Hayworth because everybody thought this is a Rita Hayworth movie. It's about her life, and um, it was not at all. And um, Obviously, Rita Hayworth is significant in the fact that Andy gets a <clears throat> Rita Hayworth poster on his wall. And they also the other you know, the show clip of a of a film of hers. And so Yeah, this is a great film, you know. Not many women are in it. The, the few women that are there, they're just there for like a scene or two. And also it shows as time goes on, you know, at the end of the film for the Pearl Board, there is <clears throat> a woman because it's the 60s and so prior to it when you see uh, Red go to <clears throat> his parole you know he's up for parole he goes and speaks to the parole board um, first two times he you know uh, there is uh, there's just men and then the third time there's a woman just shows how you know times have changed um, but yeah, uh, this film is, uh, has, um, a lot of people look at this as like a really good, like a film about friendship, you know, it's no real rope, there's no romance, no this or that. It's just a film about two guys who, you know, they respect each other. They like each other. And, um, yeah, it's, this is just an excellent film. Uh, Roger Ebert <laughs> is quoted, uh, for the, like the film's fifth anniversary, absorbs us and takes us away, or takes away the awareness that we are watching a film. Watching the film again, I admired it even more than I, than the first time I saw it. Uh, this Blu-ray disc that I have. Uh, came out 2010, so uh, 16th anniversary of the film. Um, I really love this film. Um, I believe this is on 4K or will be coming to 4K this year. I know the Green Mile is. This might be one I might actually upgrade for sure. Because I really love this film. I love The Green Mile too, But between the two, I love this more. A bit more. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite films of all time. Um, I know there are some people who think it's a bit of an overrated film. Because of how, you know, popular it became. You know. And some might have attributed to it in the sense like. It didn't do well at the box office, and so, or or at the awards circuit, <clears throat> and so people are sort of, I guess, compensating that for all the praise that it's getting afterwards. Um, but I believe it's deserving of all the praise it got, regardless of uh, its lack of major accolades. Uh, it's 
just a phenomenal film. Great from beginning to end. Acting is excellent. Um, writing's phenomenal. Direction is to it's just. I always say this is one of those films that you could probably put as a, a perfect film. It is truly perfect in so many ways from the storytelling and the execution of everything. It's just a uh, use of uh, music of the times, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, just fantastic, appropriate for, and of course the score is phenomenal. Thomas Newman is fantastic. Um, yeah, not much else to really say. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to really give a gist at all about that, but I guess I clearly lied. <laughs> because, you know, as, you know, over the years, you know, uh, I have, uh, which is nice that I've gotten more subscribers over the years. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, I hope... Uh, the volume also on this isn't that bad, but if it is, I shall uh, adjust where need be. Uh, usually I just have to, you know, dial it up a bit or crank it down a bit, depending if I was loud or fairly quiet. Excellent film. Um, the special features on here, if you don't have this Blu-ray. Yeah, you have the commentary by the writer-director Frank Darabont. The two documentaries. Hope Springs Eternal, look back at the Shawshank Redemption, Shawshank, the redeeming feature, uh, the Charlie Rose segment featuring Darabont, Tim Robbins, and Morgan Freeman, comic spoof, the Shark, Shark Tank Redemption, and uh, stills, collectibles, galleries, as well as the, <clears throat> the trailer. So there you go. I will say, I think at some point, like a film like this, I think it should be, you know, either in the Criterion Collection or Arrow or uh, Kino Lorber, Shout Factory, you know, one of these labels should, I think, uh, uh, release this. It would be quite appropriate, I think, because it's 30 years old. It is a very important film you know culturally and very significant and all that um <clears throat> i believe it's in the uh, national film registry here um don't quote me on that but i think it is you know enough time has passed where you would be looked at and be like yeah you could put it in <sighs> if not it should be just say that so uh yeah that's really all I have to say. This should have won multiple awards that were big. Freeman should have won. This film should have won Best Picture. Darabont should have won Director Screenplay. And I just think that uh, this is a, a film worth watching over and over. And if you have never seen this film, I would say give it a watch. It is 142 minutes, so under two and a half hours, which is not bad. Um, obviously today, you know, there's a lot of movies that are three hours <laughs> or thereabouts. Um, and I love three hour films. Um, but you know, it's interesting how as time goes on, that's, you know, uh, people are actually willing to watch films that are about three hours. Whereas years ago, a three hour film would be like rare or over three hours would be fairly rare. Like maybe like one or two would be made in relation to the year. Um, obviously this is also based off of a novella. So the story itself was like at least shorter than this. So there is some expansion here, but I think the expansion in the areas, um, that, uh, we're not in the original story, uh, are fine. Also, Red in the original story was a short, red-headed Irishman. 
or Irish American. Whereas Morgan Freeman is the opposite, but he does, they do make a little joke about that where you know, they call you red. Why do you call you red? Google's maybe because I'm Irish. Which, you know, that could be seen as a joke, but as well, or it could be seen as genuine. But it's mostly like, you know, it's like a reference to his original uh, literary uh, roots, how he's a short, uh, red-headed Irish-American, whereas Morgan Freeman is a tall uh, black man with an excellent voice, and he does narrate this film. Um, so that's nice if you like Nor uh, Morgan Freeman's voice in his narrations. If anything, at least check it out for that. That's really good. Um, but the film itself is fantastic, so... If you haven't seen it, give it a watch, at least. So I don't know where it'll be streaming, but... Uh, this is an old enough film, you know, three years old this year, so... Should be able to get it fairly affordable on Blu-ray, DVD. Uh, comes out if it's out now, or does come out on 4K might be cheaper or it might be fairly cheap because some of the newer releases i've seen for 4k aren't all that bad so that's always a positive um yeah that's really all i have to say i hope all of you are doing well hope you're all having a great day hope you're all having a or had a great week i hope you'll have a great weekend and that the next week will be great it will be June, so, yeah. Please take care, and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Be well. Bye.